Well, we are out here in beautiful Tennessee and uh, we're going to stretch the legs of this impact that I set up a few days ago. Um, just to run through the setup again, we've got an FX Impact M3 with an 800mm 22 caliber barrel. We are shooting a 40 grain Javelin Gen 2 slug at around 1040 feet per second, which is moving. And we've got targets all the way out to 350 yards. Now we do have a bit of wind this morning and the wind where I am, am is totally different to the wind down at those ranges so I'm not even going to bother to take the Kestrel out for, for wind readings but what I am going to do is I'm going to use my Kestrel to, to find my uh, atmospheric conditions, uh, humidity, temperature, barometric pressure and, uh, and use that just to, to try and uh, true my trajectory. I know, I know that the BC of these slugs is around 0.137 to 0.14 um, in that ballpark so we should be pretty spot on if we can get our atmospherics correct so first thing I'm going to do is we're going to switch on the Kestrel and what I like to do with the Kestrel on is the sensor here that picks up the, the atmospherics sometimes if you keep it in one place it doesn't pick everything up correctly so that's what the string is for you give it a swing it actually gathers the conditions better when you do that and I'm going to plug in my density altitude it's saying basically 500 meters and that's the only piece of information I need density altitude kind of wraps everything into one package so 500 meters I'm going to plug that into Strelok Pro 500 and as the conditions change and get a bit hotter today that density altitude uh, will actually start getting higher as the temperature rises so I'm going to slide on my scope cam onto this beautiful new 6 to 36 element Theos. And what I've, what's nice about the scope is we've actually got an aperture ring in the front, which on a bright day like this, it kind of reduces the objective diameter and it, 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 it allows slightly less light in. But the light it does allow in is from the center of your objective lens, which is the clearest part of the lens. So this actually allows us to get number one, better scope cam footage, but number two, it kind of cuts through the mirage a bit better, it reduces chromatic aberration, it reduces fringing, and allows us to get super, super crisp, clear images at 36 times magnification. So these targets are going to look close on the scope because they're so clear and they're so zoomed in, but I'm telling you they're far. Let's go straight to 150. So 150 yards, 4 mils elevation. Oh, and here's the wind picking up again. Now it's coming from my back. We are going to attempt to hit that first try. We've got wind left to right, or right to left rather. I'm going to start off by I'm going to start off just by holding center. And just seeing what happens. 150 yards. Impact. 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 It's a bit too easy actually. I think I was hitting right edge. But that's okay. Next target is at, what's that, 240 yards. So 9 mils elevation on the dot. I'm going to go up to 9. Going to go all the way out to 240. Get our parallax in focus. That's a long way off. We're going to see if we can blitz that target. I'll hold left edge for the... See the wind's looking like it's coming from directly behind me, so I'm going to hold center. Oh, just to the right, I think. Left edge. Hmm. <laughs> I 
That's cool. I think that's just going over perhaps. Or under. <laughs> 230 yards guys. It's almost a joke for this gun. But we're gonna go out even further. 278, that's 280 yards pretty much. 12 mils on the dot, so that's one revolution. As for the wind, still not entirely sure what to do here because it seems to be doing its own thing. Do you want to get nicely in focus? Oh, that's crystal clear. And once again, I'm just going to hold. Got two more shots in the mag. Let's take these two shots and then we're going to have to refill the mag. It's going to hold center. Just see what happens. Oh, just off the left edge. Okay, I'm going to hold 0.5 to the left. Impact. That's insane. Okay, refill the mag and we'll regroup. Slugs are nice and slippery from all the lube I've uh, put on them, which just Helps to keep the barrel nice and clean, keep the friction low, stop the lead from being pulled off. And look how pretty these Gen 2s are. They're just asking to be sent down range. <laughs> right, we've refilled the mag, 28 shots, and we're going to re-engage that target. Um, I'm actually going to use my same hold, don't know if the wind has changed, but Half a mil to the left, and let's see, how, let's see if we can hit that thing a few times in a row. Impact. Impact. Oh, just off the left edge. I'm going to hold slightly more. Impact. Okay, this is too easy. <laughs> Let's go out to 300. Now, this is going to be a real challenge because spotting misses is very, very challenging. But 310 yards. 14.2 mils. Yeah, that's tough. Let's see what we can do. So what's that, 310, that's an extra 30 yards basically from what we just shot. I'm going to zoom out here to try and find that target a little bit. Oh, there you go. And I'm going to give it 0.8 mils. Let's just see what we can do. Okay, give it 0.5. I have a feeling that might not be exactly 310, so let's give it a slight hold under with the same wind hold. Hmm. Impact. Impact. Guys, 310 yards in the wind. Three hits in a row on a, what is that, a three inch plate. That's insane. You could not do that a few years ago with an air rifle. You just couldn't do that a few years ago. Should we give the one 350 a try? I don't even know if I've got that on my on my setup, but we'll give it a try. 350. 17 mils. Okay. 17 mils for elevation. That's so far. That's so far. 
So a slightly bigger target though, which might help us. I'm going to give it half a mil again for wind. Let's just see what happens. Impact. Mm, just missed there. Impact. Impact. We don't even have targets further than that. That's crazy. That's 17 mils of elevation. Now I'm quickly going to zoom out on my scope to six times just so you can get an idea of how small that target really is. There you go. That's six times. It's small. But I'm going to call it there, guys. I'd say I'm pretty much ready for the uh, Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge. Can't blame the gun if something goes wrong. It's all on me. Back to zero. Thanks for watching, and uh, let's get on with filming with everyone else, shall we? Cool stuff.